So what is an attack? Cyber attacks are, can be broken down into seven distinct stages, which we refer to as the cyber intrusion kill chain. The first stage of the kill chain is called reconnaissance. This is where the threat actor gains information about your business and potentially your employees from your websites, social media pages, uh, other avenues. They wanna learn about you. The threat actor may also run what are called botnets uh, on the internet against any internet facing network devices or applications that your company has to determine weaknesses that could be exploited in an attack. Based on their reconnaissance, the threat actor then determines the best way to weaponize their attack, creating a payload that they'll embed onto an external website that they want to get you to access or to embed in a uh, file, uh, such as a Word document or a PDF that they'll put in a phishing email. Once the payload is weaponized, the threat actor will attempt to deliver it to you. Again, this is usually done through email phishing attacks where individuals encourage uh, the recipient of the email to open the attachment or click a link on the website, uh, which will contain malicious software. In some cases, Bad actors have been known to even drop USB devices in parking lots, hoping that someone in the business will pick up the USB device, take it into the office, plug it into a machine, um, and on that USB is the malware that they want executed, which will then contaminate the system. Um, then we go into the exploitation phase, and that occurs when the payload executes and takes advantage of vulnerabilities on the device. Typically, these vulnerabilities exist in the operating system um, or commonly used application software. And sometimes you'll hear these vulnerabilities be called zero days. If these vulnerabilities exist on your system, installation occurs, and that allows the threat actor to create their initial foothold in your environment from which to launch additional reconnaissance of your network and systems, perhaps dump usernames and passwords, or start actions towards their ultimate goal. At this point, the threat actor will also establish what we call command and control channels back to their home servers so that they can download additional malware, perhaps uh, launch uh, remote sessions into your environment, and then run uh, additional code to uh, move from system to system. Ultimately, their end goal is to get to the actions on objective stage at which point they will start to steal your data files, destroy files, encrypt them for ransom, and or take other actions to disrupt your business environment. The next slide. Obviously, the earlier you can prevent the attack, minimizes the severity of the impact to your business and the costs associated with the mitigation and remediation. So what can your organization do to disrupt the kill chain? To disrupt the, rec the reconnaissance phase, uh, watch your social media posts. Periodically check um, your profiles to see if anybody's cloned them or spoofed them for your identity in an attempt to try to get people to follow them instead of following you, where they can lure perhaps your, your patients or uh, your vendors into some type of an attack. Uh, the link listed on the page, haveibeenpawned.com, actually will allow you to check to see if your credentials have been made or have been compromised. Make sure you use different passwords on all your systems. If you have business accounts that have passwords, you should have personal accounts which have different passwords. Don't use the same passwords on all your systems. Don't discuss information on details about your systems. Be careful discussing what vendors you have relationships with in open, open forum, as attackers could attempt to spoof their identities to deliver payloads to you. Uh, we commonly say don't open an email uh, that, uh, or click on a link if you're not expecting it from a particular person. If they're spoofing your vendor or supplier, uh, or maybe even one of your patients, they might get you to click on a file or a link that way. 
To disrupt the delivery, make sure you've deployed antivirus tools and keep them current. Have your uh, email and web filtering in place to scan any inbound email for threats and to check any outbound web traffic to look for malicious sites and to protect against them. Education is key. Um, there are some good education um, tools out there, um, particularly uh, Wombat Proofpoint has some good user education on security practices and how to avoid phishing attacks. Conduct periodic phishing tests if possible. Uh, there are some tools and services out there that allow you to send your employees phish tests to see how they would react and to see if they need any additional training in that area. Limit the use of USB devices and configure your computers not to auto run executables that are stored on them. That's a simple fix to your Windows operating system. To disrupt exploitation, make sure you keep your operating systems and applications up to date and patched. If possible, there are tools out there to run vulnerability scans on your systems to look for potential weaknesses, or you may even want to involve an external group to perform a penetration test. The threat actor is looking for holes in your security, you should be doing it as well. To disrupt installation, in addition to good antivirus tools, consider controlling who can install software in your environment and what software can be installed. Only use trusted sources and vendors for software. Potentially use whitelist tools like Microsoft's AppLocker to control software. Also consider using multi-factor authentication to control administrator access to key systems and network devices um, versus allowing employees to do, have that same access. As uh, we've mentioned, there are some new great zero trust tools out there that are available to prevent the execution of unauthorized code if it should occur in your environment, in addition to the antivirus tools. To disrupt command and control, make sure your network has firewalls in place and periodically check their configuration to limit what is allowed inbound into your network and outbound from your network. There are additional services like Zscaler, which allows you to send all your outbound traffic through a central proxy and that proxy service will allow you to scan for um, malicious sites that maybe uh, somebody is attempting to access. It'll also check the traffic to make sure that nothing bad is coming back in. You can also use some of those proxy services to look for um, leakage of any patient data and send you alerts. In the event, unfortunate event that the threat actor is actually able to perform actions on objectives to get to the seventh stage, there are some key things that you must have in place. The first is to make sure that you have good backups and secure backups that are available so that you can quickly restore your environment. These backups should be maintained on a separate network and or stored offsite to protect them from the attack itself. Threat actors and ransomware attacks typically target backup systems first to foil your ability to recover so that you're kind of forced into paying the ransom. Have disaster recovery plan developed, outlining the process steps that you need to take and the order in which your system should be uh, restored. Have cyber insurance in place to cover investigative, initial remediation, and charges related to potential damages. And keep a good forensics team on retainer to help your investigation. You may need this in conjunction with any insurance uh, claims that you need to make. 